Hi Year 12. This is the third video for the solutions to the 2022 Maths Advanced HSC paper. In this video, we're going to look at questions 23 to 32. Question 23. The depth of water in a bay rises and falls with the tide. On a particular day, the depth of water d metres can be modelled by this equation. T is the time in hours since low tide. Part A, find the depth of water at low tide and high tide. So this is a trigonometric model. And I guess one of the first things I want to say to you is that if you're going to use this in your calculator, you definitely need to be in radians. How can you tell that? Because of this pi here. But most trigonometric models are going to be in radians anyway, particularly when time is involved. Now, if we want the depth of water at low tide and high tide, we're talking about amplitude. Now, in this case, we have got, you see this negative here? We've got a negative cos. So cos normally looks like this. The negative is going to flip it over, so it's going to go like this instead. And this here is going to move it, shift it up 1.3. So our graph is going to end up looking something like this, which kind of makes sense. Now, in order to find the depth of water at low tide and at high tide, we need to know this amplitude. And we also need to know the centre of motion. So remember that our trig model would look something like this. We've got cos, in this case we've just got nt plus c. This is the center of motion. So, oh sorry, we've got an a there as well. That's this number here. So this is 1.3 here. And remember this is going to be our amplitude. So our amplitude is 0 0.6. So 0 0.6. And so the depth of water at low tide, we're going to do 1.3 take away 0 0.6, which is 0 0.7 metres. And high tide will be 1.3 plus 0 0.6, which is 1.9 metres. Part B, what is the time interval in hours between two successive low tides. So that's asking us the period, isn't it? So recall that period is equal to 2 pi on n, and n is the coefficient in this case of t. So it's going to be 2 pi divided by 4 pi over 25, which is equal to 2 pi times 25 on 4 pi. All right, cancels, cancels, 25 divided by 2 is 12.5 hours. Part C, for how long between successive low tides will the depth of water be at least one metre? So say that's one metre there. We want the time between here and here. And this is going to mean solving a trigonometric equation. So we want the depth of water to be one. Okay, I'm going to be sneaky. I'm going to move that over there and the one over here. So 0 0.6 cos 4 pi on 25t is equal to 1.3 take away 1, which is 0 0.3. Okay, moving up here. Dividing both sides by 0 0.6 cos of 4 pi on 25t is equal to 0 0.3 divided 0 0.6, which is a half. Okay, so 4 pi on 25t will be equal to inverse cos of a half. All right, so all stations to central, that's going to be here and here. So it's going to be equal to inverse cos of a half. So in the first quadrant, that is 60 degrees, so pi on 3. And down here, that will be 2 pi take away pi on 3, which is 5 pi on 3. Now we need to solve these two equations. So the first one is 4 pi on 25. I'm going to call this one t1 is equal to pi on 3. So t1 is equal to pi on 3 times 25 on 4 pi. Pi, rather. Cancel, cancel. I end up with 25 on 12 hours. And t2, let's see. 
4 pi on 25. T2 will equal 5 pi on 3. So T2 is equal to 5 pi on 3 times 25 on 4 pi. Cancel, cancel, equals 125 over 12. And so the time that's elapsed is equal to 125 on 12, take away 25 on 12, which is 100 on 12, and that is that equal to 100 divided by 12, 8.3 hours, or 8 hours and 20 minutes. Question 24. Joe is researching the relationship between the ages of teenage characters in television series and the ages of actors playing these characters. After collecting the data, Joe finds the correlation coefficient, draws a scatter plot, and draws a line of best fit. Describe and interpret the data and other information provided with reference to the context given. Now, this is a bit of a tricky question. It's worth four marks. And if we have a look at the marking criteria, it's next to useless. For one mark, you have to provide some relevant information. Two marks provide some description and interpretation. Three provide a sound description and interpretation. And four provide a comprehensive description and interpretation. Now, what on earth does that mean? Basically, we need to say four things. So let's start with the obvious correlation coefficient. This is showing a weak positive relationship. So that's going to get us one mark weak positive. Secondly, we can talk about this. Now, if we want to use this line of best fit, we need to stay within the poles of the data, which are 14 through to 17 years. So we could say that this model is valid for ages 14 through to 17. Outside 14 to 17, we call it extrapolation, and we shouldn't use the line of best fit. So there's a second mark. Thirdly, we could show how we would use this. So we could substitute in, say, a character age of 15 years, and we could predict what the actor's age is going to be. But that's about all I can think of statistically. What else could we say? Have a look at this. We look at this data set here, and then this one here. Do you see any differences between them? Can you see that in this first set, we actually have a 14-year-old playing a 14-year-old, and we have a 15-year-old playing a 15-year-old. But when we get into this data set, the actors are much older than the characters. So we could comment on that. And that's just one example. If you go and have a look at the solutions, it'll give you about six or seven different things that you could say about that data set. Question 25. Let f of x equal sine 2x. Find the value of x for x is between 0 and pi, for which the first derivative is negative root 3 and the second derivative is 2. So let's start by differentiating. First derivative. This is a chain rule. Outside function is sine, so that becomes cos. Times by the derivative of the inside function, which is 2. Answer 2 cos 2x. And that's going to be equal to negative root 3. Second derivative. So from here, the 2 will hang around. And again, I have got a chain rule. Outside function is cos. That becomes negative sine times by the derivative of the inside function, which is 2. Tidy it up. Negative 4 sine 2x. And that is equal to 2. So we've got two equations here. We've got cos 2x is equal to negative root 3 on 2. And sine 2x is equal to negative 2 and 4, which is negative 1 half. All right, coming up to all stations to central. Now, I know we have this domain, so normally we'd just go around these first two quadrants, but because we've got 2x, I'm going to go all the way around, because I know when I divide by 2, it's going to jump back into here or here. And we know that both cos and sine are negative, and that's here. So I'm going to start by figuring out what the reference angle is. And that's the angle in the first quadrant. And that's where either sine or cos is going to be positive. So let's start by going sine 2x is equal to a half. So 2x will equal inverse sine of a half. 
inverse sine of a half is 30 degrees or pi on 6. And so x will equal pi on 12. That's our reference angle or our first quadrant angle. Of course, I want to be in here. This means it's going to be pi plus pi on 12. So therefore, our angle x is going to be 7 pi on 12. Question 26. The lifespan of batteries from a particular factory is normally distributed. Has mean 840 hours and standard deviation of 80. Let's just fill in a few of these. Um, take away 80 is 4760. Take away 80 is 680. It is known from statistical tables that for this distribution, approximately 60% of the batteries have a lifespan less than 860. So that's about here. And that's all of that is 60%. And that is 860. What is the approximate percentage of batteries with a lifespan between 820 and 920? All right, let's see what we've got. We've got 920 there. 820 we don't have at all but that's here and it's symmetrical can you see that um here this is 50 percent new color so that little tiny bit in there must be 10 percent and this is symmetrical that there is 820 so 820 is 20 below 840 and 860 is 20 above 840. So that part in there must also be 10%. So what do you say? Um, this is going to be equal to the probability. We want 820 up to 920. Okay. So between 820 and 840, that part there is 10%. And then we want between 840 and 9, oh, there's meant to be an X in there, and 920, and that part there. So between 840, that's the mean, and 920, that's part of our empirical rule. I'll just draw this again for you. Empirical rule, so we've got mu, and we've got one standard deviation above the mean, and one standard deviation below the mean, and that there is 68%. The bit in here would be 34%. So that's 34%. And so our answer here is 44%. Pretty nasty question, actually. You've got an extra bit of information here from statistical tables, and you've got empirical rule that you've got to split up. And you've got symmetry happening with those two parts there being symmetrical. Question 27. Let f of x equal x e to the negative 2x. It is given that f dashed of x is equal to e to the negative 2x. Take away 2x, e to the negative 2x. Part A show that the second derivative is equal to 4 brackets x minus 1 e to the negative 2x. So we want to differentiate this. Now we can do term by term, and that's okay. And here we will have a product rule. So let's set this up first. We're going to let u equal... 2x and v equal e to the negative 2x and differentiating them u dashed is equal to 2 and v dashed is equal to this is a chain rule so e to the negative 2x multiplied by the derivative of the inside function which is negative 2 tidy it up negative 2 e to the negative 2x all right let's go second derivative is going to be equal to Right, let's differentiate that. That's actually what we just did up here. So let's cheat. Negative 2 e to the negative 2x. Take away. And now I want to do this part here. Now, this negative worries me, so I'm going to put brackets there so I don't make a mistake. All right, u v dashed. That's a 2 there, actually. 2x plus v u dashed. Okay. Tidy this up, negative 2e to the negative 2x. I'm going to tidy this up inside the brackets first. So negative 4xe to the negative 2x plus 2e to the negative 2x. And now expand, 
negative 2e to the negative 2x plus 4x e to the negative 2x take away 2e to the negative 2x and we can combine these two together so that gives us negative 4e to the negative 2x plus 4x e to the negative 2x. Now let's have a look at the form that we want to put it in. We want to factorise that 4 out the front, 4, and we've also got an e to the negative 2x, 2x brackets. I'm going to do this term first. That is x take away 1. Find any stationary points of f of x and determine their nature. So we want our first derivative, which is here. And we want to put that equal to 0. So e to the negative 2x minus 2x e to the negative 2x is equal to 0. Let's factorise. e to the negative 2x, 1 minus 2x is equal to 0. Now, null factor law. Either that is equal to 0, which it never is, or this is equal to 0, which it is. 1 minus 2x is equal to 0. 2x is equal to 1. There's going to be a stationary point of x is equal to a half. All right, we want to know the stationary point, so both coordinates, let's substitute back into the curve, which is here. So f of a half is equal to a half, e to the negative 2 times a half. Now, I want to leave this in exact form. So this is a half, e to the negative 1, or 1 on 2e. So there's a stationary point at a half, 1 on 2e. Now, we need to determine its nature, so we're going to use the second derivative f dash dash of a half is equal to 4 times a half take away 1 is negative a half e to the negative 2 times a half is negative 1 and this is negative isn't it so it's less than 0 less than 0 is concave down so it's a maximum there is a maximum at a half 1 on 2 e Part C, sketch the curve y equals x e to the negative 2x showing any stationary points, points of inflection and intercepts with the axes. Now we worked out that there is a maximum at a half and 1 on 2e. We need to work out intercepts and also inflections. So let's start with intercepts. At x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. And if we substitute in y is equal to 0, we get x e to the negative 2x. This is never equal to 0, but this is. So this is actually the only intercept with the axes. And then finally, we want points of inflection. So we are going to put our second derivative equal to 0. 4 x minus 1 e to the negative 2x is equal to 0. Again, that's not ever equal to 0, but this is. So there's an inflection at x equals 1. We need the y coordinate, so substitute back into the curve y will equal 1 times e to the negative 2, which is the same as 1 over e squared. So there's an inflection at 1, 1 over e squared. Right, we're ready to sketch. So we have a maximum at a half and 1 on 2e. And in order to sketch this, we need to turn these into decimals. So this is 0 0.5. And just on my calculator, I'm going to go 1 divided by 2 E, which is 0 0.18 or 0 0.2 even, be easier to sketch. And here we've got an inflection at 1, and 1 divided by E2 is 0 0.14. And then we've got an intercept at 0, 0. So plotting those points and joining them up into a curve, we can see that we've got a maximum at 0 0.5, so it's coming up through here. And then we've got an inflection, a change in concavity here. So it changes from concave down to concave up. Now we know it never cuts the x-axis again, so it's actually going to get closer and closer to the x-axis. It hasn't asked us to discuss asymptotes, so we won't do that, but that's what the curve looks like. Question 28. Graph of the circle x squared plus y squared equals 2 is shown. The interval connecting the origin and the point 1, 1 makes an angle theta. 
with a positive x-axis. By considering the value of theta, find the exact area of the shaded region as shown in the diagram. Okay, so we want this area here. So that's going to be the area of this sector. Take away the area of the triangle. Agreed? The radius of this circle is root 2. We can tell that from here. And we're going to be working in radians. So from our reference sheet, the area of a sector is a half r squared theta. Now we know r is root 2, so r squared is 2. We actually don't know what theta is. So this is actually the area is equal to theta. That's the area of the sector. And the area of the triangle. Uh, we know that that distance there is 1, that distance there is 1, so it's just a half times 1 times 1 is equal to a half. So the area that we're after is going to be equal to area of the sector, theta, take away half. But what is theta? Can you see that it is 45 degrees? Just doing tan on this, tan theta is equal to 1 on 1, so theta is equal to 45 degrees. Of course we need to be in radians, which is pi on 4 so area is pi on 4, take away a half units squared. Part of the hyperbola y equals a on b minus x minus 1, which passes through the points 0, 0 and 1, 1, is drawn with the circle x squared plus y squared equals 2 as shown. Show that a equals b equals 2. So we know our hyperbola is going to pass through these points 0, 0 and 1, 1. So let's substitute in x equals 0 and y equals 0. 0 equals a on b minus 1. Take the 1 over. 1 equals a on b. Multiply both sides by b, we get b is equal to a. So there's our first equation. We're going to do simultaneous equations. Now let's substitute in the point 1, 1. 1 equals a on b minus 1 minus 1. So take that minus 1 over. 2 is equal to a on b minus 1. And let's multiply both sides by b minus 1. So 2b minus 1 is equal to a. That'll probably do us. Now let's substitute equation 1 into equation 2. So it's going to be 2a minus 1 equals a. 2a minus 2 equals a. a minus 2 is equal to 0. a is equal to 2. Therefore, a is equal to b is equal to 2. Part C. Using parts A and B, find the exact area of the region bounded by the hyperbola, the positive x-axis, and the circle as shown in the diagram. So what we've got here is this area, which is going to be the integral between 0 and 1 of A is 2, B is 2, and then we're going to add on this area that we worked in part, worked out in part A, which from memory is pi on 4, take away a half, I think. I hope that's right. All right, we need to integrate this. Let's do that. So between 0 and 1, 2 on 2 minus x minus 1 dx is equal to. All right, this is going to be a log. The 2 just hangs around. We have ln of 2 minus x. It is a reverse chain rule. So we need to divide by the derivative of the inside function, which is negative 1. And when I integrate negative 1, I get x in between 0 and 1. Equals, I'm going to tidy this up first. I don't like it. Negative 2, ln 2 minus x minus x between 0 and 1. Okay, equals. Substituting the 1 in, negative 2, ln 2 take away 1, is 1, take away 1, minus brackets. Now, don't assume that 0 is going to disappear. It's not. Put the 0 into here. We get negative 2, ln 2 take away 0 is 2, and then take away, I'm up to here, 0. Wow, what are we going to do? A uh, log of 1, that's 0, that's gone. So I've got negative 1 plus 2, ln 2. Okay, so therefore, our total area, let's just go here, is going to be, so area equals 2 ln 2 minus 1 plus pi 
pi on 4, take away half, I can do one more bit of simplifi simplification, plus pi on 4, take 3 on 2. It is an area, units squared. Question 29. The diagram shows the graph of y equals 2 to the negative x. Also shown on the diagram are the first five of an infinite number of rectangular strips with one unit and height y equals 2 to the negative x for non-negative integer values of x. For example, the second rectangle, so that's this one here, has a width of 1 and it has a height there of a half. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? Because put x equals 1 into here, you'll get 2 to the negative 1, which is a half. Okay. The sum of the areas of the rectangles forms a geometric sequence series. Right, let's rub all this out. Show the limiting sum of this series is 2. All right. Let's, we need to start by trying to set this up. So the area is going to be equal to this first one here is width 1 multiplied by 2 to the 0. Okay. I'm putting this into there. Plus. 1 times, I'm putting this one in, 2 to the negative 1 plus 1 times 2 to the negative 2 plus 1 times 2 to the negative 3 plus dot dot dot. Now let's put these in fraction form. So that's 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus dot dot dot. Now we just need to use our sum formula. So from our reference sheet, the sum to infinity is a on 1 minus r. Our first term is 1. What is our common ratio? A half. So this is 1 divided by a half, which is 2. Part B, show that the integral between 0 and 4, 2 to the negative x dx is 15 on 16 and learn 2. You will need your reference sheet for this. So we have got 0 and 4 to the negative 2 dx. Now, when you are integrating a to the x, you get a to the x divided by ln a plus c. All right, so we're going to get, in brackets, 2. We've also got a negative in here. So 2 to the negative x divided by ln 2. So that's the outside function, okay, because this is a chain rule, reverse chain rule. We've got an inside function. So we need to also divide by the derivative of the inside function, which is negative 1, in brackets between 0 and 4. Let's tidy this up first. So I've got negative 2 to the negative x on ln 2 between 0 and 4. So I'm going to get, I'm going to throw this out the front. That's all right with you. The negative 1 and the ln 2. So I've got 2 to the negative 4 take away 2 to the 0. Again, don't risk disregard this 0. It is actually going to give you a value other than 0. Equals negative 1 on ln 2. That's 1 on 16. Take away 2 to the power of 0 is 1. Okay, up here. Equals negative 1 on ln 2. 1 16th take away 1 is negative 15 on 16 and I believe that will do it. That gives us 15 on 16 ln 2. Part C. Use parts A and B to show that e to the 15 is less than 2 to the power of 32. All right, part A said that 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus dot 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 had a limiting sum of 2, and that in the diagram is represented by the area of these rectangles. Now we can see that the area of the rectangles is going to be greater than the area under the curve. Area under the curve is this part here. Now I know it only goes to 4, but when we get down here all the way to infinity, we're talking about minuscule little parts, so we can ignore that. We can say with confidence that 2 will be greater than the integral, the area under the curve between 0 and 4 of 2 to the negative x dx. And that, of course, is equal to 15 on 16 ln 2. Now, ignoring this bit, 
and just doing 2 is greater than 15 on 16, learn 2. Multiply both sides by 16, learn 2. 32, learn 2 is greater than 15. That's the same as learn 2 to the power of 32 is greater than 15. And taking it out of log form into index form, we get 2 to the 32 is greater than e to the 15. Or e to the 15 is less than 2 to the 32 as required. Question 30. Continuous random variable x has cumulative distribution function given by this. Show that k is equal to 3. All right. Huge thing to notice there. Capital F of x. This is the antiderivative. It has already been integrated. Now, most of you have been taught that we have to, to show that it is a valid probability distribution function, we have to do the area under the curve between 1 and e cubed of f of x dx, but we don't know f of x, we only know capital F of x. So this is equal to this. Okay, super, super important. I mean, the thing is, you can't integrate this anyway. If you went to try and do this, you're going to get stuck because you don't know the integral of log x. So you cannot. All right, so let's do this instead. This is what it is. 1 on k, learn x in between 1 and e cubed. All right, substituting it, it's actually a much easier question. Learn e cubed, take away 1 on k, learn 1. And this has to be equal to 1. Area under the curve has to be equal to 1. Now, that is 0. So 1 on k, what are we going to do with this? Okay, third log law, that's 3 learn e. And that's going to be equal to 1. And learn e is one, so that's gone. So three on k is equal to one. Therefore, k is equal to three. Given that the probability that x is less than c is equal to two times the probability that x is greater than c, find the exact value of c. So we know that capital F of x now is equal to one third of ln x. So this, this means integral between 1 and c of little f of x that we don't know is equal to two lots of the integral x is greater than c, so between c and e cubed of little f of x of dx, which we don't know, but we do know the antiderivative, don't we? So this is 1 on 3 ln x between 1 and c is equal to 2. 1 on 3, learn x in between c and e cubed. All right, let's come up here. In fact, I'm just going to rub that out. I need a bit more room. So we're going to come all the way up here. All right, substituting in. That's a c there. So 1 third, learn c. Take away 1 third, learn 1 is equal to. The right hand side, two lots of. 1 third, learn e cubed, take away 1 third, learn c. We are solving for c. That is 0. It's gone. 1 third, learn c is equal to 2, th two outside of, remember this bit, the 3 comes down and then learn e is 1. So that's 1. You can go a bit slower on that bit if you want to. Minus 1 third, learn c. Now what? Expand, I suppose, 1 third ln c is equal to 2 minus 2 thirds ln c. Get those ln c's together. So I take this guy over. 1 third plus 2 thirds is 1. So ln c is equal to 2. Now remember, this is log base e. So let's take it out of log form into index form. So e to the power of 2 is equal to c. Therefore, c is equal to e squared. Question 31. A line passes through the point P and meets the axes at x, 0 and 0, y. And x is greater than 1. Show that y is equal to 2x over x minus 1. All right, these points here are collinear. They lie on the same line, which means that this gradient here is going to be equal to this gradient here. So I'm going to write an expression for the gradient of yp and put it equal to the gradient of px.
All right, here we go. 2 take y over 1 take 0 is equal to 0 take 2 on x take 1. All right, cross multiply. 2 minus y in brackets, x minus 1 is equal to negative 2 times 1, which is equal to negative 2. Expanding 2x, take 2, take yx plus y is equal to negative 2. You can see that they're going to cancel out. So 2x is equal to, let's take this over the other side, yx, take away y, factorise the right-hand side, and divide both sides by x minus 1, y is equal to 2x on x minus 1 as required. Part B, find the minimum value of the area of triangle x, o, y. Okay, so we want firstly an expression for the area of the triangle, and that's going to be a half times the base, which is x, times the height, which is y. But we know that y is equal to 2x over x minus 1. So let's substitute that in. Half of x times 2x over x minus 1. We can cancel these 2s, and we end up with x squared over x minus 1. Now, to find the minimum value, we want dA dx. So we want to differentiate this. Now, that's a quotient rule, isn't it? And u is equal to x squared, and v is equal to x minus 1. U dashed is 2x, V dashed is 1. So our quotient rule is V U dashed minus U V dashed on the numerator. V is x minus 1 times U dashed, which is 2x, take away U, which is x squared, times V dashed, which is 1, all over the denominator, which is V squared, x minus 1, all squared. Now we want to solve this equal to 0. So we want a turning point, a maximum or a minimum. Expanding that numerator, we get 2x squared, take 2x, take x squared, all over x minus 1, all squared. Now, we don't need to worry about the denominator. It can't be equal to 0 anyway. We only need to solve 0 is equal to 2x squared, take 2x, take x squared. That is x squared minus 2x. In other words, we want to solve 0 is equal to x, bracket, x minus 2. Now, obviously, x could be equal to 0 or 2, but we know that x is greater than 1, so 0 is out. So x equals 2 is our answer, but we still need to show that it is a minimum. You can see there's four marks here. So we could do our second derivative, but first derivative is pretty ugly. So let's instead do the first derivative test, or sometimes called the bucket test. So we've got x is equal to 2. We can't go to 1 here, because it's not included in the range. We can go to 1.5, and then we can do 2.5. So this is x. This is a dashed. Right, on my calculator, I'm going to use my fraction button. I'm going to put in 1.5 squared, take away 2 times 1.5, all over, and then in brackets, 1.5, take away 1, in brackets, squared. There is a bit of a shortcut to this. The denominator is always positive because it's squared. But anyway, that's negative 3. Putting in 2, we know we get 0. And now I'm going to do 2.5. So 2.5 squared, take away 2 times 2.5 on the numerator, on the denominator, bracket, 2.5 take 1, close brackets all squared, is 0 0.5 repeater. So this is negative, 0, positive. It is a minimum. Now, last thing, let's check the question. Find the minimum value of the area. We actually haven't done that, have we? We know what x is. We don't know what the area is. So always make a check at the end to make sure you've answered the question. So we just want to do a is equal to x squared, so 2 squared on 2 minus 1 is equal to 2 squared is 4 over 1. It's equal to, I'm running out of room, 4 units squared. That's the minimum area. Question 32. 
In a reducing balance loan, an amount P is borrowed for a period of N months at an interest rate of 0.25% per month. That's important. Compounded monthly. At the end of each month, a repayment of M dollars is made. After the nth repayment has been made, the amount owing is given by this. Jane borrows $200,000. That's the principal. In a reducing balance loan as described, the loan is to be repaid in 180 monthly repayments. That is N. Show that M is equal to 138. 1.16 rounded to the nearest cent. All right, let's substitute in what we know. So A of 180. After 180 payments, the balance will be zero. And that's equal to the principal, 200,000. 1.0025 to the power of 180. Take away M. 1 plus 1.0025 plus 1.0025 squared plus dot 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 plus 1.0025 to 179 equals 200,000 1.0025 to 180 take away m and now I'm going to sum this series a is 1 r is 1.0025 to the power of n take away 1 all over 1.0025, take away 1. Okay. Now, I'm going to take this over to the other side of the equation with the 0. And at the same time, I'm going to work this out on my calculator. So I'm going to use my fraction button. It is 1.0025 to the power of 180. Take away 1. All over 0 0.0025, which is... 226.972689. You can see how many decimal places I've left there. All of them. Now on this side here, I've got this. Let's work that out. 200,000 times 1.0025 to the power of 180 equals 3134863. So M is equal to 31348.6.3449 all over 226.9726899, which is equal to 226.9726899. There we go. 1381.16. Part B. After 100 repayments of $1,381.16 have been made the interest rate changes to 0.35 percent per month at this stage the amount owing to the nearest dollar is hundred thousand and thirty two dollars jane continues to make the same monthly repayments for how many more months will jane need to make full monthly repayments of this amount all right so here's our equation up here we don't know what n is and p has changed and so is the interest rate so we've got a n is equal to hundred thousand and thirty two 1.0035 to the power of n take away m is 1381.16 1 plus 1.0035 1 plus 1.0035 squared plus dot 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 plus 1.0035 to the n minus 1 okay uh, we know that after n months it's going to be equal to zero. We just don't know what n is. So on our left hand side, I'm going to put this, which is $100,032. And on the other side, I'm going to put this, which is going to be 1381.16. And now I'm going to sum the series. So A is 1, R is 1.0035, N is N take away 1, all over 1.0035, take 1. Okay, we're getting there. I can't do anything here. Now, please do not multiply those numbers together because this one is to the power of n and this one is not. So down here, 100,032, that's a 3, and 32, 1.0035 to the power of n equals okay i'm going to do this 
divided by that. Okay, so that is 1381.16 divided by 0 0.0035, which is pretty horrible. 3946171429. In brackets, 1.0035, the power of n, take 1. Expand that right hand side. And remember, I can't multiply those together. I have 3946171.1429, lots of 1.0035 to the n. Take away 3946171.1429. You need to be careful with all these decimals. All right, now I want to collect these two terms together because I've got that many 1.0035 to the power of n's and then this many 1.0035 to the powers of n. And in fact, the right hand side's bigger, so I'm going to go this way. So I'll take that guy over. Right, watch this bit. 3946171.1429 is equal to, I've still got that number in my calculator, take away 100032 is, where is it? 2945882. 5.1429 lots of 1.0035 n. We're getting there. Now we have an exponential equation here and we need to divide both sides by this number. I'm just going to do that in my calculator. Just bear with me for a second. It is equal to 1.339569. It's equal to 1.0035 to the power of n. Take logs of both sides. So ln 1.339569 is equal to, this is our third log law, n ln 1.0035. Divide both sides by this number. So n is equal to ln 1.339569 divided by ln 1.0035 and on the calculator what are we going to get then 1.339569 bracket learn 1.0035 close my brackets 83.67 83.674 months let's see that if we've answered the question for how many more months will jane need to make full monthly payments so she will need to make them for, she will need to make 83 more full repayments. And part C, the final repayment will be less than $1,381.16. How much will Jane need to pay in the final payment in order to pay off the loan? Now you can see my working up there. And we also know that she has just paid 83 full payments. So what we want to do is find what the balance is after the 83rd payment, then give it some interest and pay it out. Okay, so we've got 100,032, 1.0035 to the power of 83. Now I'm going to sum this in one go. A, first term is 1, brackets R, the power of 83, take away 1, all over 1.0035, take away 1. Okay, equals, grab my calculator. 100,032 times 1.0035 to the power of 83, minus... 1381.16 times a fraction button, 1.0035 to the power of 83, take away 1, and on the denominator, 1.0035, take away 1, equals da, 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 $885.99, well, actually, $886. Okay, we need to then give it some interest. So I'm going to do 880. Actually, I'll do some decimal places here just to make it accurate. 
9999 times some interest. And so her final repayment is going to be 0.0035 equals $889.10. And ta-da, we are done.